Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Um, okay, I will start to present myself. Uh, I'm Daniel Huggins. I came from Belgium. Uh, I'm an anthropologist and I work for FEDASIL, the Federal Agency for the Reception of Asylum Seekers uh, in Belgium. Um, in 2013, I spent three months in uh, Cameroon and living uh, with the LGBT community in, uh, in this country, in uh, Yaoundé and Douala, and I'm also a coordinator of a social service in one um, reception center in Brussels. So, um, Today I will speak about the social vulnerability of LGBTI asylum seekers in the collective accommodation facilities. And I will start the development of this team by asking two questions, and I will humbly try to provide answer to this question using um, testimonies. The first question is, uh, speaking about LGBTI asylum seekers, do they find in the host country the same situation they fled in their country of origin. And the second question, do the collective reception facilities answer to the specific need of the growing category of asylum seekers? I began to ask myself this question by listening to LGBTI asylum seekers during discussion uh, groups at the Rainbow House Association in Brussels as a part of an activity uh, called Rainbows United, and I will s speak about this activity uh, later. The recurrence of some words in the stories challenged me. These words are shame, secrecy, fear, lies, discrimination. But they all spoke about Belgium, not of the country of origin, or rather of the reception center in Belgium. However, our discrimination laws in Belgium are very clear. So what's happening uh, then in the reception centers? To really understand the hints and outs of the, dev uh, of the development of this team regarding the intake procedure of newcomers in general and LGBT in particular, it seems uh, interesting to apprehend first the reception center as a space but not any space. It's a space of accommodation, a place, uh, a place to live even if it's temporary. Maybe can we put this paradigm in relation what, with uh, what is commonly called home? The French sociologist Smain Lacha said, the home is the center of the world and the place from which all things come, not because it is a place where one lives, but because one can come back to it and find their refuge and safety. The home is unique because there is by definition only one center of the world. Once in the land of immigration, and this is especially true for asylum seekers, the first experience of the new life will be the acute loss of the home. Ultimately, they exchange the home for an accommodation. The French anthropologist Michel Agier said, however, people who are refugees and displaced in camp transform the space. They try to make it theirs. They mark the limits and they trace their small daily borders to make a copy of home by investing in an anonymous and shapeless space initially. So by doing that, they try to relocate the feeling to be at home and feel secure. This is why it's important to have an efficient and professional reception policy to ensure the feeling of well-being and safety. This policy requires the development of an intake procedure in which every employee of the reception center has a definite role to play. Communication and information to the residents are the key words of this procedure. Good information from the beginning about the asylum's procedure, the different possible decisions, and their consequences on accommodation is essential. An effective intake procedure can proactively reduce the risk of depression due to the feeling of dependence, disorientation, and loss of control of his life. 
This is actually what we can observe uh, in the reception center in Belgium or as elsewhere. Sometimes symbolically by posting photographs on the walls, flags, through various exhibits uh, commemorating the country, but especially by attempting to weave a social network in their community new location. For asylum seekers who, whose application is based on sexual orientation or gender identity, the presence of their compatriots in the reception centers is their main problem. Rebuilding a home, as told by Michel Lagier, homosexual people in centers cannot do so, or moreover, do they want. The home from there, that's what they fled. They, that's what um, they are trying to forget, but who are reminded in every moment in the center. The memory is not relocated here, they are not rebuilding by themselves the locality ev uh, elsewhere as they want. It is relocated as it is in the country of origin by the others. Flee, flee again and leave the center to breath even their home is confisc confiscated. And to give a place to the words coming from the ground, here is a testimony of an African LGBT asylum seeker. They, speaking about his uh, compatriots, they think it's because of the police I came here. They think I had problem with the president or something else. It's not because of that I came. And suddenly two of them, they have discussed the matter of, um, of homosexuality. One say to the other, you know the prison break, he's a faggot. You know the one who played the film prison break. And they began to argue about it. The other said, but the faggot there, we must kill them. They are there, no, to, criti to criticize without knowing. I'm in shock because it's what I am. Look, you have your, in your country, you, are, you, are, you have stress. You come here again, where you go, you still have stress. This testimony and many others are going in the same direction. They show the difficulty that gay asylum seekers have to, to live serenely in a reception center. I choose this testimony because it allows returning to the notion of loss. Their experience is punctuated by losses before departure, upon departure, during migration, on arrival, and maybe even later. This fear of losing something is there. The discovery of their homosexuality will amount to lose new friends, the family they have re recreated, the frail relationship they try to build despite the disruption with the community in a place of uh, cohabitation. They are not here to break with the people they were at home, but on the contrary, to stay who they are because it's precisely the reason for the exile. At the seminar in Rome in October 2013, in which I participated with a collaborator of Commissar General for Refugee and Stateless Person, Sonia Shaw from the Swedish Migration Board and Christina Franchini from the UNHCR Regional Representation for Southern Europe star, uh, stated that it's clear that homophobia exists in the reception centers in Europe. LGBT asylum seekers are often subject to discrimination and stigmatization with their own community in reception centers, but also from other communities with which they must coexist. This means for many of them a second trauma upon arrival in the host country, where they plan to taste for the freedom to be uh, who they are really, they find the same situation they fled. They have to stay or worse, to return in the closet. Had to this lack of training and awareness of managing managerial and support staff to the specific problem faced by this public, and we have the characteristic of an extremely vulnerable target group. Training for the reception center staff must be highly recommended. To solve this, 
an asylum seeker made me the following proposal in a question form. Do you think it's a good idea to create centers for gays and let the other, I mean those who are not homosexual, in other center? This is a question that must be asked. If in terms of security, this solution is pleasant, it is not practically feasible and even desirable. Firstly, because we don't know who is effectively gay or who is not. Secondly, because if we do this, we will continue to stigmatize people or even strengthen this stigmatization. To set them apart when all they ask is to be integrated into the society quite normally as everybody is really, for me, the last thing to do. I ask this question to a granted refugee who has lived a strong stigma in the center where he lives because of his sexual orientation, but also because of his gender expression. And here is his reaction. No, no, I think no. I think it's not because um, then, no, I think it's not good. Because then if we do that, we, we will do something that, can we, that we can call auto-discrimination. If we are isolated, we cannot ask to people to accept us as we are. It means only that we are not like other people. We are clearly, clearly here in the field of recognition in the process of socialization and individualization. That means individual equal in dignity and right that, that can deny discrimination and demand to be recognized as they are. They can demand equal treatment and refuse any kind of discrimination related to the specific way of life and otherwise appropriate treatment in relation to these specificities. But this question can, hi can highlight that there is a problem of education in reception centers, a problem of education to which the reception center staff need to work with people, not just be satisfied with the fact of saying to homosexuals, you can live uh, as you are, but also as intimate, intimate in centers in Belgium to have an educational approach toward our others' resident and say that homophobia is not allowed, that homophobia is zero tolerance as well as racism. It seems to me that there is, as a, so, a social worker, a responsibility to say stop and something to do to prevent this homophobia. We must have a debate on the subject and consider homosexuals, like the Commissar General for Refugee and Stateless person, Persons in Belgium, as a vulnerable target group because they have a specificity that other asylum seekers don't have. Some people try to hide their nationality, religion, ethnicity, for fear of stigma, discrimination, from an opposite group. LGBT asylum seekers not have only to hide who they are, but they have to do so in the eyes of their own community. That is where the problem is. Because what testimonies say is nothing else than the fear of rejection Daniel, soci social insecurity to be alone again rejected as in the country of origin. Some project to help. Since 2008, Fedazel has implanted a project to inform and sensitize social workers in reception center on the theme of reception and support for LGBTI asylum seekers. The project, Aa Asos Daso, specific help for sexual orientation of asylum seekers. In June 2013, this project was integrated in the Federal Action Plan to Fight Against Homophobic and Transphobic Discrimination. This is a project of my government, uh, and it is in the um, uh, component of, uh, about asylum and migration. In some reception centers, but it's, it is unfortunately not the case everywhere. The staff is already quite aware about the team. We hope to establish for next year uh, some visits to reception center to sensitize the staff and also to organize training days. But as you can imagine regarding the current situation and the crisis, the migration crisis in Europe, this, the 
priorities are elsewhere. A part of the project mentioned above, uh, uh, above is an activity reserved to LGBT asylum seekers, uh, and that activity is scheduled uh, since April 2010, last, uh, uh, every last Thursday of the month on the Rainbow House in Brussels, and this project is called um, Rainbows United. The goals of the activity include allow each participant to find a place where they can be himself or herself without fearing any judgment, encourage contact between LGBTI asylum seekers so they can build a social network in relation with their orientation, uh, sexual orientation or gender identity. Uh, to re relative, relativize and contextualize homosexuality to restore the climate of trust with the authority. Uh, in this case, the Commissar General for Refugee and Stateless uh, Person, including the protection officers. To encourage and assist participants to speak more confidently and easily about their sexual orientation in front of people they do not necessarily know and that will be the case during the interview at the Commissar General. Inform the participants on Belgian legislation on homophobic discrimination or aggression and what to do if it happens. Orientate participants to more specific associations according to their needs or ge geographically closest uh, to the place uh, of residence and open a space for women run by women. As an anthropologist, the material of my research is the observation and the words of the people concerned on the ground. So I will share with you uh, two testimonies. The first one. When I spoke with my assistant, she told me she will give me train tickets to come here. She told that even in my center there are people who are like me, who are gays, and that I, and that I will meet them there. Then I'm really happy because I thought I was the only one in my center. Uh, and I hide it. So no, I come here and I discover some gay guys from my center. At least with them I can tell my problem. I can share, I can speak. Uh, I found two people who are in the center with me. That really makes me much better. No, at least we will be able to talk about us. The second one, I came here, so at the Rainbows United activity, and I discovered that some of the center are like me. I say, wow, I have found those who are my peers. We are from the same center, and right now I feel I really be somebody. I will find the smile I have lost a long time ago. That's what I wanted to say. I take you my head off for what you are really doing for us. Because right, no, because right now, I think that when I will come back again, I'll be really not longer the boy who has dragged it for too long, but another guy. I feel I'm like reborn. The Belgi Belgian anthropologist Pascal Jamoul wrote in, his, in, in her work, Par delà les silences, the support of a peer group is an important step to overcome the shame and isolation. Peer support Devices of solidarity and self-support group are levers for a self-rebuilding as important as the help of professionals. However, in the field of reception or procedure, one of the most important points to remember from the ground and from the reflection of uh, after the Rome seminar is the importance of training on this subject to sensitize all skateholders throughout the procedure and reception, whether the examiner, interpreters, lawyer, social worker, and accompanying reception center staff, and any other social actor in contact with, with LGBTI applicants. For Nicole Laviolette, associate professor of the Faculty of Law at the University of Ottawa, these courses are necessary because if all skateholders will, who interact with sexual minorities are not thinking about their own prejudices, about, uh, about homosexuality and transsexuality, they are unable to fairly assess the demand of LGBTI people. 
ignorance, fear, and hostility can lead to poor decision with a result of negative impact of asylum claims if all the decision makers base their assessments on stereotypes uh, and prejudices to make their decision. Similarly, all the resettlement efforts can be undermined if staff are homophobic or heterosexist. Targeted and specialized training can be one solution without being a panacea to solve the problem faces, faced by LGBTI asylum applicants. Conclusion. Hypothesis that the situation of the country of origin can be implemented in the reception centers in Belgium seems to be confirmed. We are in presence of a target group that found in our reception centers in Belgium, but also throughout Europe, the same situation they fled in the country of origin, or even worse. Since to, they occur discriminated, not only by their own community of origin, but they are facing homophobia from other groups with whom they have to coexist in the reception center, centers. They constitute a target group dreaming of freedom, a group finding until ultimately confinement, withdrawal, and loneliness. Arrive at the host country, they cannot take possession of all this anonymous and informed space to make theirs even temporarily, as well said by Michel Agier. The time of an uncertain procedure of a stress, uh, stressful waiting time for decision or just settle down, to, uh, settle down to rest. Doing this, some other keeps them under pain and social relegation, confining them in a shameful identity, again reduced to silence, to fight the fight to get out of the scenario that is repeated again and again is not over. What to do to reduce the waiting time between the interview and the decision? First, recognize that the people is the, the this public is vulner, vulnerable. Recognize also that there is a problem of civic education in reception centers under our anti-discrimination laws. Recognize that the lack of training of skate order on this issue is an handicap to a good accompaniment to these persons and objective treatment in full knowledge of their case. Anthropologist Pascal Jamoud writes, make the implicit explicit, openly acknowledge segregation, discrimination, and inequality of opportunity can help to fight more effectively against them. That's exactly what it is about. Train the field worker as advocated by UNHCR and Council of Europe is a serious track, even if it's not a panacea. But beyond all this, what can we hold of the level of the human being on the other, the person which is individual and collective identity? I do not think doing wrong by saying that this, this human is a human suffering. Maybe uh, many have to, left the, to escape the violence, save their lives, seek a more conciliatory elsewhere, on their way of life, forget the past and exist, trying to rebuild a life, a home elsewhere when it's possible, an identity through the migration process, making the painful experience of the loss and the struggle for recognition to exist in the eyes of the others after facing denial, shame, exclusion, and self-disesteem. As we and we have get orders of all institutions. We must try to have the awareness to put a little bit the human at the center of the migra migration uh, concern. Realize that behind the count of the number and statistic be behind each unit, there is a person, an individual, a man, a woman, a teenager, or a child with his personal and collective history its sufferings, its value, its losses and hopes that the quality of human being that he or she has, which is also mine, yours, he or she deserves to be treated with the utmost respect. Thank you for listening.